In this video, I'm gonna show you three separate ways that you can use multicam sequences to help you save time selecting your visuals in the edit. The first one is going to deal with layouts and creating a bunch of different preset layouts and treating it like a multicam sequence. So when you're doing jump cuts or you're doing a gaming stream or something like a podcast, it makes the selection of your videos much quicker. So I have the video game footage on track three. I have my on-camera footage, but let's say I also want an angle that punches into my face, just as something to cut to if I need to do some jump cuts. So here's a uh, secondary angle of me on camera, and then I want a third angle. So I'm gonna take that video game, I'm just gonna take a simple opacity mask, click that, move it to where my face is, hold shift to make it a perfect circle, and then I can move my video right there, maybe scale it down a little bit, and here is where I'm going to take the video gameplay and my on camera, right click, nest that. And now we treat this as one camera angle. We treat the video game as one camera angle. We treat my punched in as one camera angle. And we treat the original on camera as one camera angle. So now we have four camera angles from basically one shot or two if you count the gameplay. If I highlight all of this, nest all of it, and just call it, I don't know, let's, we'll call it take two for right now. Right click and do multi-camera enable. I go to my multi-camera settings and here are those four angles where if I were to play back this, Let's say that's, we're like, whoa, we want to, hey, it's a bit, and then we go back to this. And then we're like, hey, I'm talking. Then we go back to this. You can see the opportunities here for switching between different angles quickly if you're jump cutting and you're editing something. The other place where this really comes in handy is if you're doing a podcast. So let's say it's me. I'm having a podcast with this gamer guy right here. And I'm going to take his first clip, leave it like it is, and then take his clip, duplicate it, put it right here, and just frame him up in the right way. So I already went through and took the crop tool and cropped my image to the center. And let's say we were having a podcast like this. I highlight both of these, right click and nest, hit okay. So now we have me, dual shot, then gamer guy. Take all three of those clips, right click, nest, call it the pod, right click, multi-camera, enable, and you guess it, we go back to multi-camera view and now we have three camera views really quick that we can switch in between for a uh, podcast like so and you got it. The second one I'm gonna talk about is an option known as multi-cam selection top-down. What even is it? And how it can help you if you edit things like music videos or events. And what this is referring to is if you have two multi-cam sequences stacked on top of each other, what happens with your multi-camera view here? Which one are you looking at? And this is common for something like a music video. Let's say you have a multi-cam sequence that's completely built up of crowd shots like here. And then the other multi-cam sequence is just the band shots. The bottom is the crowd, the top is the band. And as I click around, Notice that the edits only affected the crowd shots. Let's say I actually didn't want to do that. I wanted to do the band shots and I want to see the band shots. So I'm going to unselect toggle track view. And now whichever one of these is selected for my track targeting is what it's going to look at. But let's say you have a huge timeline full of footage and you don't want to keep going over here to the track targeting. By default, when all of these clips have track targeting turned on, it's going to go to the lowest one. Right here, crowd one is selected. If I don't select that, again, I'll play. I hit my hotkeys to click around here. Um, it's only changing the crowd ones, but you don't see that because they're below the band shots. Now, if you wanted to have the option of whatever is actually highest in your timeline, this is where top-down selection 
comes into play. So I'm gonna go back over here to my menu and do multi-camera selection top down and look at what happens when I click this. Play, and then I'm going to start doing the selecting. And look at this, it's, uh, it's, it paused the video because it recognized that I hit top down selection. So now it's looking at the top clip. So if I hit play and go between the different views right here, now we have the band on the top and I'm selecting that. If I take this off and I start making some selections, it paused and it was like, oh, wait a minute. Hey, you, you turn that off. I'm gonna now reference the bottom clips. So that's top down selection. And it's really helpful if you're cutting a music video and you have multiple multi-cam sequences filled with highlights, crowd shots, B-roll, all that you need to cut in sequence. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is the sequence setting of switch audio. And this one can be very complicated if you don't know what you're doing. So this whole conversation of multi-cam sequences has been an ongoing series on my channel. This is part three in that series. If you're unfamiliar with even how to create a multi-cam sequence, then I would suggest checking out parts one and two. So I've highlighted all of the footage that I've been working with throughout this entire series, and I'm gonna go to create multi-cam sequence. Underneath sequence settings, instead of camera one or all cameras, now I'm going to choose switch audio. Now I hit okay, bringing all of those sequences into the timeline. Things are looking a lot like when we use the camera one sequence setting, except now when I click around my multi-camera view in the program monitor, we can now click the black space because our audio now has its own video track. And this is because in practice, we're able to switch between our audio references here in the monitor. So it's treating our audio channels as if they were their own video tracks to choose from. The only catch here is when I go to play back my video, and choose between these video sources, it's supposed it's to example. switch the audio with so the video things. source. But when I go down to my timeline, it's stayed the same audio and only switched the video. And that's because if we go over here to the hamburger menu, we need to turn on multi-camera audio follows video. So I'm gonna click that, zoom out, and now I'll go to this take, hit play. I'm talking, so I have some waveforms to reference, like a attack transient, a delay, and sustain and then so now when i'm switching between the angles it does switch the audio to that source and i want to point out here that one of the audio sources was recorded in mono so this is another issue that you could encounter and we've already solved this in part two of this series by modifying the audio here inside the program monitor i'll reference that part in the description if you wanna check it out. Right here, this boom audio, if we were to right click and go to modify audio channels, I would change this to dual mono before converting these to multi-cam sequences. And then that would alleviate this left side attack transient issue. So remember, if you need to do switch audio as your sequence setting, make sure that the multi-camera audio follows video is selected if you need the audio to follow the video and make sure that all of your audio and video sources have the same amount of audio channels. And then you'll avoid a lot of the headaches that you might encounter with switch audio. If this video is helpful, don't forget to leave me that thumbs up. Remember that this is part three in my multi-cam sequence series. If you wanna check out parts one and two, they might be on the screen. Hopefully, if you're interested, you'll check them out. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.